Jasmine Paulini, Barbara Krajcikova. Yes, it's not a first round at Wimbledon. It is, in fact, the final. Two names nobody expected, but this one should be epic. That's right. It is the final that none of us expected. As you said, JG, we were all expecting a Rabakina in the final, a Coco Goff in the final, maybe even an Eager in the final, even though she's not that great at Wimbledon. But look who has come up trumps again. Jasmine Paolini, back-to-back slam finals, fantastic performance, and Barbola Krajcikova comes back from the depths. It's almost like she disappeared off the tour, and then she just comes back. She's the French Open champion from a few years ago, is now one match away from being a grass court slam champion and a clay court slam champion and having her name down in the history books, JG. Yeah, I feel I should start this episode um, addressing some of the recent comments and some videos. And I think people are right to say it, and that is how I have been a bit dismissive of Barbara Krajcikova as not only a tennis player, but her this event particularly. Uh, I didn't think she was going to do very well. I've had her going out pretty much every single round. I've not been big on her this for us this season. I don't think she's produced many good results. But it seems to be, in a Grand Slam, she does rise to the occasion. And she's playing incredibly well at the moment. So I put my hands up. I was completely wrong. I wasn't expecting these kind of performances. And I'm going to give her her dues and respect. Because she definitely does have a big chance of winning this final. It's not an impossible task. If you can beat Rabak in our Wimbledon, who I would say is probably the greatest player we've seen at Wimbledon since Serena Williams, um, then why can you not? Or she's sort of like a Navritilova sort of next gen come through, a regen of of her. If you can beat her, you've got a chance of winning the whole thing. It doesn't matter who you are. Rabak and I do think is that good on the grass, and she was fully fit. She was playing very well in that first set, and. Krajcikova managed to come through and look at her now. 2021 Roland Garros champion. 10 doubles Grand Slam titles. She comes back to beat the champion of 2022, Rabakina. 3-6, 6-3, 6-4 and reaches her first Wimbledon final. It's her second career Grand Slam singles final and we know the first time she was there she won it. It's Paulini's second final. This time in a row because she got to the Roland Garros one but she's not won any. Uh, based off that, it looks like Krajcika is going to walk it. Well, and this other stat, which I'm just about to bring up as well. Barbara Krajcikova is the world number 32 this week. Uh, last time she played a Grand Slam event as a non-top 30 player, this happened. There you go. <laughs> she won at the French Open. So that just goes to show, doesn't it? It doesn't really matter where she is in the rankings. If she puts her best tennis together, Barbara Krajcikova, she can pretty much beat anyone on a tennis court. That's what she's shown on the women's side. She's a fantastic tennis player, and I think she gets a bit of a hard time because she's not, like, the biggest personality on the tour. And I think we need to sort of sing the praises of the people who are, like, the quiet, uh, unsung people because she's a fantastic tennis player. We should always speak about how good she is. I even said, I think it was, like, a few like months ago, I had a in like as a big three at one point oh, because I well, thought she was a few months like, ago. Steady on, Ben. You mean a few well, years ago? Well, you when definitely she was, didn't. So, did you have her in your top ten then? Come the, no, end of the start of the year. No, I'm not saying I, I did, but I'm saying that when she beat Eager and she was able to beat Eager, that wasn't in this like year, though, was it? I can't even remember when it was that she last played Eager. I'm saying honest. I think I think you're getting you've lost your your timings. We have not been talking about Krajcikova for well over a year. And she was very she good maybe like two either. years ago, two or three. Yeah, she she definitely was. I know, so it was, it was the beginning of last year. That was it when we were talking about... <laughs> there we she... come. That's like a year yeah, but, and seven yeah, months ago. this is ago. what I mean. <laughs> well, no, you I mean. just a few months ago. You well, it is a few months. A few months, a few months, a year. A few What's months, between friends? two years. <laughs> well, anyway, regardless. In the past, I was saying that she was part of potentially a big three so Correct, yeah. and this is the thing i thought that she was that good 
to, for her to fall off the way that she did over the course of the rest of 2023 and then start 2024, not that great either. It's just such a, a surprise to me, but I'm it's a, a happy surprise as well because I didn't really want to see someone with the quality of Kolei Chikova just disappear into thin air and just have that one Grand Slam run that everyone will remember her for. She's quality and she's proven it again here. She come, she's come back from a set down to beat Rebecca. That's so difficult on grass. And she looked well. out of it as well. She did look yeah. out of it. I watched the first set and was like, okay, well, this was the easiest prediction I've ever done. I was like, Ben's <laughs> going to look like an idiot. This is an easy straight setter. Uh, I was convinced of it, in fact, after that first set. And then to see Kratuka win the second, I was like, wow, that's weird. So Rebecca is going to win in three now. Didn't happen either. So I'm very confused. Um, didn't see it coming. <laughs> Her career high is two in the world. Yes. She's moved up 18 places with this Wimbledon run. She's now 14th in the world, just above Emma Navarro, who's in 15. Um, but talking of rankings, I'm going to just mention probably my favourite player on the tour right now. Uh, across the men's and the women's, I feel like I found my Rafa replacement. And she goes by the name of Jasmine Paolini, or Paul, Paulini. Yeah. Uh, and he still need to work out what, what what one it is. I mean, maybe listen to the WTA website and you can clarify for I'll me. Quick, I'll have a quick look now. What a player! <laughs> bring up, bring a photo up of, of her because Jasmine Pooley. Uh, it's frustrating me now that we've been corrected in the in the comments. I'm going to say Paulini. Apologies if it is wrong. It's just amazing. She's a little yeah. bundle of joy. She's got so much energy. She's defensively perfect. She plays big points well. She saves break points, just like Yannick Sinner does. She doesn't look rattled by the occasion. She's played however many Wimbledons over the years. And she loses every single time in the first round. She's never won a match at Wimbledon before today. No, before this tournament. Yeah. And now she's in the final of Wimbledon. She's just come off the final of Roland Garros. It's insane. I love her. I love her personality off court. I love the way she plays tennis. The match today against Donna Vekic is is my favourite match, women's match I've watched for I don't remember how long. I cannot remember in instant memory a better match this year. I thought Donna Vekic played a brilliant match. It was entertaining. Iga is fantastic. I can't say I'm entertained like I was today, though. Eager's matches, they're okay. Some of them are good, especially when she plays Sabalenka. Creates a bit of excitement. Is she going to win? Is she going to lose? There's a bit of... You're not sure what's going to happen. You see some good moments. But it's, you can't compare it to what I've witnessed. I thought that the Donna vekic Paulini match was incredible. Um, Vekic was the, the more aggressive player. Paulini was on the back foot. And she just kept getting another ball back, but not just getting it back with some venom, using clever angles, coming into the net, little lobs, little touches, delicate volleys, the serve. I love the second serve. Doesn't have much pace, but it's a little kick serve onto the backhand of Vekic. Vekic then, what's she going to do? The power's off her, off her racket. She's the one dictating the points. She had opportunities. She was up a break in the second after winning the first. She was up a break in the third. Donna Vekic had it on her racket and Paulini said, no, it's not going to happen. I am not going to let you get to this final. This is my time. I've tasted a final and I want to taste another one. And whatever you can throw at me, I'm here and I'm going to put another ball back over that net. Jasmine Paulini, remember the name. She can come for the US Open as well. She can come for the Olympics. She can do anything on a tennis court. Doesn't matter what surface, doesn't matter where it is. I'm not getting too carried away. Um, she's the best player I've ever seen, Ben. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke, I love guys. It. I love it. I love the passion. I can just see the comments. Someone's already just commenting right now. JD, she said the best player I've ever seen. Has she not watched Serena Williams? She's not even won a Grand Slam yet. <laughs> and, and yeah, I know. I love the passion. And I, I love the tenacity of Jasmine Paolini on a tennis court. I think that's the one thing that she brings, which you don't get to see from many other women on the tour, is she's so tenacious. She looks like she's always fighting tooth and nail, like just to try and win every single point on the tennis court. She looks so disappointed every time she loses a point, but then she's 
the joy that comes out of her once she's won the match. You see her today jumping around. Like, I mean, it was one of the like best sights I think I've seen. And people have been she's comparing She's animated her. as well. She wins it like the set or saves a big yeah. break point. She's like, come on. Or she goes, the- what's up? <laughs> she's like giving exactly. it all. I love it. It's energy. She's, she's, it's brilliant. She's, she's, she's like- comfortable as well. She's comfortable on the big stage. Mm. And people have been comparing her to like a female Carlos Alcaraz for the smile that she brings to the tennis court as well. Because it's when she's playing well, the tennis, she's smiling. Though, a different style. No, the tennis is different. But the smile and how much enjoyment she has out on a tennis court when she's playing well. And when she looks to her box, you can see the love. The f- first thing she did as soon as she won was blew a kiss to her box. Like you could see like it was just like all of the love coming out of her instantly. I mean a very likeable tennis player. And I'm hoping this year is the start of the rest of her career, to be honest. Like, this is not just a flash in the pan this year. It's proven now by Wimbledon. She's backed up the Roland Garros final. It wasn't luck. Now we've done it on another surface. Can she do it on the hard courts as well? That's the what we know that she won Dubai. Can she do the US Open? Can she get to the final of the US Open next? I don't know. Anything's possible for Jasmine Paolini right now. And like uh, this tweet says here, in the last six months, uh, Jasmine Paolini achieved a WTA 1000 title on hard court, Roland Garros final on clay, Wimbledon final on grass. I mean, pff, pretty insane, really. For what a year she's having. Yeah, she's just become an elite player on all surfaces out of nowhere. Nobody saw it coming. No one had her in her top inside the top ten. She's been on the tour for quite a few years. I've seen the name many times since we've been yeah. starting the podcast. Um, I'm going to hazard a guess of eight years. I don't know. I'd have to have a look. But I feel like she's been around for a bit. I've seen the name for a while. All of a sudden, she's become a world beater and one of the best tennis players we've ever seen. I mean, players able to reach the final of Roland Garros and Wimbledon in the same season over the past 17 years. Federer, Nadal, Djokovic, Serena Williams, Andy Murray and Jasmine Paolini. <laughs> Let me just put that into perspective. That is mental. <laughs> that is actually mental. <laughs> I mean, that is insane. And look at this next one as well, because if you think that statistic and being in that company is crazy, then this next one will look even more crazy. Jasmine Paolini's Grand Slam results until 2023. Take us through these. So here we go. I mean, yeah, I don't know what to say, mate. Qualifier, 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 second round of qualifying, qualifier, 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 second round of qualifier, 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 round one, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, 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 she's two, one, one. She just goes out in the first round or can't get in. All of a sudden, now she's in the final. But not just one final, two, back to back. I mean, Round I was four saying earlier, the... US Open, it's on a hard court. Final? Like, is it oh. it's possible, right? Well, she's been to round four. She started the year pretty sloppily, really. Round four of the Australian Open. No, but that and round then... four for her was her best ever. <laughs> I, I know, that's why it's so crazy. Now it doesn't even look that good. <laughs> But, I mean, it's just, it is insane to think that this is what she's doing right now. Well, it's just, and, um, she's just levelled up. Yeah. I've, I, mean, she's leveled up. The... I can't, I, I don't think I watched her that often, but I just always looked at her as someone who didn't have much power and was going to always get beaten. Um, seemed to have good shots here and there, but yeah, complete different level altogether and so happy for her and her family. You can see how much they mean to her. It's great seeing her brother there in the box today. He had the Stone Island on, trying to get it in, in the shot. Uh, maybe he's going to watch the England match later or something. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, we've got another tweet here saying, Pauline is the first Italian female player in the Open era. Um, uh, it was a Wimbledon final. Grand Slam finals at different events. Roland Garros, Wimbledon. 15 wins in the first three majors of the year, which is amazing. Stat that one as well. WTA finals on hard clay and grass in a season. I mean, greedy. Greedy. That's what it says. <laughs> well, I'll tell you who's greedy. Not her, the Italians. Because yeah, I mean, Sinner's having a breakout year this year and become world number one and, look, and looking like a god on the courts. 
And all of a sudden, that wasn't enough for Italy. And then they're now getting someone on the women's. I mean, if she keeps going like this, she's going to be world number one as well. They're going to have world number one on the women's and, and, and on the men's. You've got the Olympics around the corner. Wouldn't you like to see Yannick Sinner, Paolini in the double? Surely they're favourite for gold. God, imagine that. That would be pretty mental. That would be... Imagine they were to win all of them. Mixed doubles. Men's. Men, <laughs> God. I, Italy have got too much uh, joy, I feel, in the tennis right now. It's well, they've got to have it in something because in football they're terrible. What a terrible showing at the Euros for Italy. They, they was embarrassed. That's the right use of the word there. That was an embarrassing performance. Um, but in the tennis completely different they're they're turning into a tennis nation they're how going to be known for tennis pasta and pizza very soon in that how order how crazy do you think it is that we've now she's in the final we're all talking about that last victory i feel felt a bit bad for beckett to be honest because she did play so well all Amazing, tournament yeah yeah but we go back to this match the the madison keys match she was five two down yeah. madison keys gets injured and she manages to win off a, a retirement because there was no way Keys was going to win the match after that. She couldn't run. And then after that, she didn't look back. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, it? she was clinging on by a little thread in this tournament and she's taken the opportunity. I mean, beating Navarro in the way she did is by far yeah. her most impressive result probably of the season. Beating someone who's that good in that much of a convincing fashion Beating Vekic as well and digging in there. When Vekic was the better player for 80% of the match, she was the more aggressive player. She had winner after winner. Paolini was just keeping her focus. Like, okay, another ball, another ball, taking everything slowly, not beating herself up, staying in the moment, taking the big shots well, saving break points well. And that's all you need to do as a tennis player sometimes. I say that's all you need to do. It's very difficult to do. But it's fine margins. And for her to constantly keep coming back, keep coming back, it just shows a level of fight and desire not many other players uh, possess. And that's why she is my new favourite player on the women's. We know yours used to be Raducanu. Um, the question to you is, who is your favourite player on the women's tour at this current state? I mean, it's really tough to pick, to be honest, at the moment. It's not Raducanu uh, anymore, right? I think you've moved a little bit no, away. I mean, I feel like I would love to see her do well, but I don't. She she hasn't been filling me with full confidence. Uh, I still love watching her play, but she's not the person that I think is going to go on and be a complete world beater right now. And they don't necessarily have to be. It's more just your favourite player. I mean, I support West Ham. We lose most weeks, so <laughs> it's more a, someone you want to get behind. I mean, somebody I, l I like getting behind this year has been Danielle Collins. I don't know, just because it's her last year on tour, but I feel like it's been a bit interchangeable, <coughs> really, uh, this year. There's, I'm waiting for somebody to You don't really have a of, one favourite. I'm waiting for somebody to sort of come and show me something that I can get behind. Katie balter has been pretty good this year. I've really liked her performances, but still lacking on the big stage, really. I'm, I, I need to see something more from some other players. But, yeah, maybe the, the US Open, someone's going to come to the forefront for me. But n no one quite at the moment. I'm loving watching Paolini, though. I think she's a great player, great like addition Keep to this now off. top 10. Yeah, the Italians, they claim everyone, all of these top <laughs> players. <laughs> I mean, I wish Coco Goff would have done a bit better, to be honest. I think I'd get be a bit more invested in her. But it's It doesn't tough. have to be doing well, Ben. It's just someone you want your support, like your favourite player to watch. Yeah, but I like them. Yeah, but Coco. You only like winners, is that what you are? You only like the ones who win everything. Pretty much. Stick yeah. with Eager then. Mm, but she's not that good at Wimbledon, is she? It's not come on. To... You can't be. She has to win every single match for you to like them. No, but I think they have to be good at Wimbledon for me being a Brit. It's one of what okay. I've been. So it has to be a grass on. court player. I think Balter's so. Balter's probably your best bet. Maybe. Right off the Maybe she I mean, Rabakina, she could have been a good bet as well, but. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to show you this anyway on the screen. Uh, this was from that Madison Keys match, just to put it into perspective. 5-2, and then 30-all, and then juice, and then broken. 
So that's how close Jasmine Paolini was to going out of this tournament. Two two points away. And look at her now, thriving in the final and uh, playing the best tennis of her career. And she's up against Klaichikova, who, well, this amazing stats for the Czech players. I was just seeing this on uh, Twitter as well, saying Czech players have now made an outstanding 12 Grand Slam finals in the last 15 seasons. So we've got Burdick, Kvitova, we've got uh, Kvitova again, Safarova, we've got Pliskova, Kvitova, we've got Vondrausova, Klaichikova, Pliskova, Mukova, Vondrausova, Klaichikova. So the Czech's doing pretty well, and Klaichikova doing well to have her name in there a couple of times it wouldn't be I don't know if anybody if anybody had Kajikova in the final of their bracket uh, please send me a screenshot of it because I think that you, well, you eat your hat yeah I mean I'll, eat, I'll find a hat and then I'll go eat a hat because the <laughs> it's beyond me how anybody would have even envisaged this happening especially with the she came into this event not in good form at all I think she lost the first round of the last tournament. So who who would have seen this coming? Absolutely nobody. But she doesn't do very well in smaller events. I think she really puts it into these grand slams and that's why we see her best. I know you've got this stat on the screen right now and that's Czech players. I could name a few nations that do a lot better than the Czech Republic. One I'm of them sure. being Serbia and Spain. Um, <laughs> or two of them being Serbia and Spain. Reason being because all of these are filled in. Mainly with just one name, and that's Novak Djokovic for Serbia and for Spain. You've had Nadal, and yep. recently Carlos Alcala. So yeah. maybe a Muguruza thrown in there once or twice. Yeah, for sure. That's the thing. I'm sure that there's a lot of Americans down there as well with Serena Williams's name next to it. Not recently, though. Not recently, but yeah, back in the day. A few Swiss ones in there, probably, back in the day as well. Um just wanted to finish our last thing with Clyde Chikova as well, just because I think we've got to give her a due. We sp- well, we speak about Paulina a lot because it's very easy. I feel like with Clyde Chikova, we've just got to give her a moment in the sun as well. And I thought it was really nice seeing her post-match interview on court where she was speaking about Jana Novotna, who was obviously one of the most famous uh, Czech players, uh, obviously no longer with us. And it was a very touching moment. Um, speaking about her, it brought her to tears on the court. And they said, you've won a doubles here twice. Did you ever dream you'd play for the women's singles final? She said, no, no, never. A couple of years ago, I was working with Jana Novotna. She won here in 98. At that point, she told me a lot of stories about her journey and how she was trying to win Wimbledon. Uh, I was so far when we had this talk. Now I'm here. Wow, I'm in the finals. And she's like saying, it's, she's definitely my inspiration. So it's, and then she said, I just miss her so much. It's just like a very touching moment. She said, well, the the other lady said, she's definitely looking down on you now. Probably very proud of you. So yeah. very touching moment and a bit of Wimbledon history as well. But yeah, nice to see this side of Barbora as well, because I think this will warm everybody to her a little bit more, because I think there's a lot of people who have been a bit harsh to her, saying, oh, she's like faking injuries in the past, all this type of thing. Get to see a bit more human side of her this this way. Uh, yeah. And hopefully it gets a few more people rooting for her in the final. Yeah, not too many, because I would, would hate to see her <laughs> win. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's, that's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, of course, lovely, lovely words, and I'm sure <laughs> Novotna is very proud <laughs> of Barbara's efforts here at Wimbledon, and she's definitely got a good shot. She is the bookie's favourite to win against What's Paolini, uh, two point two for Paolini. Okay. Uh, but let's let's get into our prediction because it's getting late here, it's almost two yeah. o'clock in the morning. Um. I don't know if you've got an image or something. Yeah, I'm just getting one now. A bit sad, this one. <laughs> I know, here we go. Um, so there she is, Paulini versus Clive Chikova for the Wimbledon final. It's not round one or two. Um, I'll go first, and that is no surprise to everyone. I am going to have Paulini winning, and of course, it will be in three sets. It won't be straight sets with Paulini. Um, she'll get it done in three. There's going to be a bit of jeopardy. It's going to be a bit of, ooh, ah. But she's ooh. going to get it done. Three sets. Well, I'm sure everybody wanted to know if they've played each other before. 
Uh, they have only played. I don't once think anyone before. wants to know that because I think it means absolutely zilch. Well, it definitely means nothing because they played each other seven year, no, six years ago. Sorry, so absolutely nothing uh, like. And the Paulini could have lost to anyone, and Kachika well, was just doing doubles probably. It would make it would make you laugh because she she lost to uh, her at the Australian Open in the first round of qualifying. <laughs> so that's when they last played. What How was the score? Six two six one for Krajicova, but. This is a long time ago. Different Paolini now. Uh, a lot of fire in her belly. I think Paolini comes out. She takes the first set. I think Klaichikova takes the second set. I've got a feeling Klaichikova wins in three. <laughs> I mean, she's favour. I can see it happening, but I don't want it to happen. I'd really love to see Paolini do it. She deserves it after losing that last one. I, I wouldn't want her to be zero percent. Like with two finals, loses both. Krajicka with two finals, wins both. Um, yeah, imagine the fair way is one each. Come on, Krajicka, you've had your slam. Wow. Let's give one to the Italian queen of tennis, Jasmine well, Paolini. Before we go anywhere, I know you've been wanting to hear this. So just for you, here you go. This is the name. Hi, my name is Jasmine Paolini. Jasmine Paolini. There you go. Paolini. I mean, we're saying yeah. it, right? Perfect. There you go. You got nothing so to So we had all these trolls about. trying to like tell us how to say something, which was fake, and now it's been getting in my head. Exactly. Paolini. Don't listen to it. Paolini. Jasmine Paolini. Yeah, I quite liked it with the echo. It sounded like she's in a big room there when she was saying that. But yeah, let's wrap this one up then. Perfect. Thank you for listening to our Wimbledon predictions for the women's final. Let us know yours in the comments section. Do you agree with Ben? Do you think Krajikova is going to win her second? Or do you agree with me and think Paolini can win her first Grand Slam at Wimbledon on the grass? Right. See you for the final. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and join us also on Spotify for all of our audio podcasts. See you soon.